What do you do when you lose your smartphone somewhere? Well, both Google and Samsung have ways for tracking your lost device. Which one is better? I'm gonna take a look at both next on Hands on Android. Hands on Android is brought to you from LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. Welcome to Hands on Android. I'm your host, Jason Howell. Now, have you ever lost your device? Whether you have or you haven't, you can imagine. It's pretty scary. Your data, your photos, in many cases, the most intimate details of your life could be stored on your device. So it's mission critical to be sure you can get it back in the event it gets lost somewhere on planet Earth. Now, Google provides an app on many Android devices called Find My Device. But Samsung offers something similar two different approaches with some of the same capabilities and some big differences. So let's spend some time looking at both to see if one is better than the other. And I'm gonna go ahead and start with Google's Find My Device app. So Find My Device by Google runs on the phone as well as in the web browser. And you can kind of see what the web browser interface is right here. We're gonna focus on the phone first. If I go into my tray here and Find Device, Go ahead and launch that app. I'm gonna to have to sign in, of course, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit in my password. All right, so I'm logged in. You can kind of see there's some similarities between these two. Now, I've got on the top row up here all of the devices that I'm currently tracking with Find My Device through Google servers. So you know I've got a Samsung Galaxy S10, the Pixel 3a, which I actually have right over here to my left, a number of devices all set up to be tracked within Google's uh, environment. And I can track those wherever they happen to be. The 3A, for instance, the 3A XL right here, you can see it's located right here where I happen to be outside or inside of the Twit building anyways. Um, down here, this is an important area. Now, if you're looking at a device that happens to be offline, there isn't a whole lot you can do. I've just switched over to this OnePlus 7 Pro that I have linked to my account. It's not online, it's not synced to the account right now, or at least it's not able to find it. But I can get some important information. Say I had lost this and it's not connected to the internet, I can tap that I, and I'm able to get the IMEI number, of course, when it was first registered, which is kind of important. Uh, but last seen, this is gonna tell me the last time I actually was able to connect this uh, online. And that might be, give me a little bit of a clue as far as where to check next. The one thing I don't get here, which is a little bit of a bummer, I would hope that even though this device is not online, I could still see on a map where it's expected to be. Now what you see there, that's basically me, uh, my device that I'm on right now, but it doesn't really show me the last place that the OnePlus 7 Pro has been synced to. And that's a big downside. I'm kind of in the dark. I have no idea what's going on with that device. I'm gonna go back to the Pixel 3a XL, as you see here. And when we are connected, we get a whole lot of more of uh, contextual information to kind of back this up. You can see that it was last seen one minute ago. I should hope so, it's right there. Uh, you can see the battery level on that device and that's helpful because if my phone is, let's say lost in a ditch somewhere and I know I need to get to it soon, knowing the battery level tells me how fast I need to work. Uh, so that's good to know. Um, also, what is it connected to? Is it connected to a Wi-Fi access point? In this case, it is, it's connected to an access point here at Twit. Um, if it was on, uh, on a cellular connection, it would show me that information there and a little refresh button so I can get up to the second uh, refresh on what that status is at this point in time. Below that, you get your controls. Now, these are pretty powerful, right? And this goes as far as, you know, maybe, maybe you lose your phone out in the wilderness and you want to, you know, play a sound so that it starts ringing and you can find it buried under a pile of leaves. I'm really setting the scene for you, aren't I? Uh, or as simple as it fell into your couch cushion. So I'm gonna go ahead and play sound, and you'll see it's really loud over on the Pixel 3a. I'm gonna stop that so I don't have to yell over it. Um, it bypasses any mute settings that are set on the phone at that point. So no matter what, if you've left it you know, with do not disturb on and everything's muted and the volume's turned down, this is going to throw everything at its loudest level so that that ring can punch through and you can find it. Beyond that, I can secure the device, which essentially means I can send a lock screen message so I can say, hey, if you find this, 
I'm looking for it and I'm really worried. Uh, and then a little phone number that I could put in there and secure the device. And once I do that, boop, it goes ahead and it turns off the Pixel 3a. It says that it's secured and I'm gonna go ahead and dismiss that. But now if I wanted to get into here, um, if I was not me, I'd have to enter a pin. But because I'm me, thankfully, I think I can just put my fingerprint. Oh, I still gotta enter my pin, so I'll do that. You can't see it. And boom, I am back in to my 3A XL. Awesome stuff. And finally, down at the very bottom, you've got the nuclear option that's erase device. Now, this is gonna send through an erase command to the phone, given that phone is connected to Wi-Fi, so that's important. But when it erases, it actually gets rid of the phone data. It also gets rid of any SD card data. So it takes care of both. Uh, just keep that in mind. You aren't gonna have access to that anymore, even if you do recover the phone. Hopefully you've got it backed up somewhere. And also uh, keep in mind that one thing that this is good for, if someone steals your phone and you send through this erase command, if they try to erase it themselves and then set it up as their own phone, it's actually going to, in the setup process of the phone, ask them to authenticate with a Google account that was installed on there prior. So it stops them in their tracks uh, from being able to take that stolen phone and put their own credentials in there, which is a really, really nice feature. So pretty robust. It's a great way to kind of protect yourself uh, in the event that you do lose the device. And like I said, this is all running on the phone. Over here, this is the web browser. This is synced up with my Google account. And I get basically the same controls from the web device. So I don't have to have somebody's phone in order to do this. I can go online and do this through the web console. And one more thing to show you, if I back out, I'm gonna go ahead and remove that instance of Find My Device. And if I launch it again, you'll see in the login that there's a sign in as guest down at the very bottom. And this could be really handy if, say, my friend lost their device and they need a device to log on to in order to find their device, they could sign in as a guest, authenticate with their Google password and their Google ID, and they'd be able to have all of this at their disposal. Now, those of you with Samsung devices, well, you have a choice to make. Out of the box, that Samsung device will be findable from Google's Find My Device app. So it's already tracked within Google's architecture. That's a good thing. But Samsung also has its own feature, which can be found for starters in the settings. And that's called Find My Mobile. And while it is similar to Google's offering, it actually offers a bit more through its web interface by comparison. So let's take a look at the phone, first of all. So on the Samsung device, first of all, it's, it's a little different. I'm going to go into settings. And from here, I'm gonna to go to biometrics and security. And here, I'm gonna find Find My Mobile. You can see it right there. All right, so you can see here, these are the main controls that you find in the Samsung implementation of their own service. Not a whole lot to go off of here. You've got this little switch for remote controls. This actually allows the phone to be remotely controlled through Samsung servers. Sounds very similar. Google location service, you want this on, that way Google can do its own tracking and integrate that location tracking into the app. So that's important. Now these advanced settings here, remote unlock, this actually allows for the phone to be remotely unlocked. And the way they do that, Samsung actually stores your PIN, your pattern, and your password. Whatever you happen to use to authenticate your phone, they store that in the cloud on their servers as kind of like a backup. And that's gonna come in handy through the web interface that I'll show you in a second. And then finally, this send last location. This you definitely want on. This will send out a ping to Samsung servers when your battery is low to say, this is where we are right now. It's, it's almost like a desperation location uh, broadcast to Samsung servers so that if you later want to find your phone and you know it was low on batteries, you'll know the last place that it was. That's about all you get with Samsung's implementation inside the phone. Where you find all the control is over in a web browser. Now I'm going to go ahead and tab right over to that. I'm going to sign in. And now once I'm logged in, you can see it's it's kind of triangulating, it's locating, it's identified my Galaxy S10 as being here at Twit. The map is uh, you know, interactive and everything so I can find exactly where it is. On the left-hand side, I have all the different devices that I'm syncing through Samsung servers at this point. Right now, we're just tracking the S10. So you can see over here on the right-hand side, basically this is the control panel. And you'll notice right away that there's a lot more options that you get through Samsung's implementation. Up in the top, this looks very familiar, right? You've got your battery, 
uh, the battery level on the device that you're tracking, what network it's connected to. Again, this is the Twit servers here. Uh, and then you know, basically the last time that it was updated, if I refresh that, it will gain the most up to the second update as far as where that phone is at this point in time, given that it can connect to it. And then beyond that, down here, you've got all of your controls. Ring, of course, is going to ring that device uh, the way we demonstrated a little bit earlier. Lock is actually really handy. It will lock the, dis the, the device. It'll also lock down Samsung Pay, and it will prevent the phone from being powered off. So if you really think that someone's stolen your phone and you don't want them to turn it off because you want to continue tracking it, that's a super powerful feature. You can send that over and they can't even power it off if they want to. <laughs> really cool stuff. Uh, track location, of course, this uh, will make sure and do a ping every 15 minutes as far as where that phone is. It'll force that location tracking into the map so you can follow it. Erase data, again, this is very similar to what I showed off in Google's implementation. It does a full factory reset that affects the phone as well as the SD card storage. Uh, and it also resets the tokens that are involved with Samsung Pay so someone couldn't use your phone to make purchases. Very important stuff there. And then beyond that, everything else is pretty different from what Google offers and kind of a bonus. This is a forced backup uh, function, you know, and keeping in mind, I believe Samsung's uh, account gives you 15 gigs of free storage. But if you have the ability to buy more, or maybe that's enough to back up your most important things from this phone that you don't have access to right now, you can send this over. And as long as you have two-factor authentication set up on your phone, it will back up your data, even though you don't have access to it. Really good feature, especially if you've locked the, uh, the current person that has your phone from powering off your device, it's always connected. Uh, you can retrieve your calls and your messages. So if you know that on your call roll that you're, you're you know, expecting an important phone call or maybe it's something to do with actually tracing and tracking that phone to begin with, you can get that and uh, get that whole list of them. Unlock, this is maybe more helpful for you if, say, you forget your password. You know, sometimes we set a password on our device and then immediately after we're like, uh, I don't remember it. Hopefully that hasn't happened to you. It's certainly happened to me in my history. But here's a way, again, Samsung has this stored in their servers. So you can just go on here, tap unlock, and it will send that, that message over to the phone and unlock it for you. If you happen to not have the phone in your possession and you want it to stay on for as long as possible, you can extend the battery life. Samsung has very robust settings inside of their devices to allow you to ramp down things that are not essential in the running of that phone. So you extend that battery life and it's going to extend out, who knows, a couple of days even. Maybe it's sitting out in the middle of the field and you know you need the time to locate it. Do that and you're gonna get some extra life out of it, which gives you more time to find it. And then finally, set guardians. This is essentially a feature that allows you to anoint someone else as someone who has the ability to do all of these things. So you wanna be really careful with who you give that access to. You don't wanna just hand it out willy-nilly, but it's nice to know that you can maybe give that access to your significant other. That way, if you are missing the device and you can't get to it, maybe they can do it for you. That's what Guardians is all about. As you can see, very robust web browser experience with a lot more added features that come in super handy. So you can see that tracking your lost phone is pretty robust, regardless of which direction you decide to head. Google, at its foundation, has you pretty covered straight out of the box. And if you happen to have a Samsung phone, well, that just means you have even more tools at your disposal. Lucky you. Send me your emails, your questions, whatever you got, to handsonandroid at twit.tv, and I'll look into answering them on the show in the future. And you can also subscribe to the show by heading over to twit.tv slash HOA. That's where you're going to find all the feeds that you need. There are links that will take you directly to the show within a list of podcatchers as well as YouTube. All right. Thank you so much for this week's episode of Hands on Android. I'm Jason Howell. I'll see you next time.